Hello everyone, I'm Janet Winkle from A Stamp in Every Hand and I've been threatening for years to try to do some uh, YouTube videos and we're doing a little experiment here. Um, I just got some new equipment for Christmas, some light, lights and a tripod and uh, this arm that puts the camera over the workspace here to make it a little easier for me. So we're going to do a little simple video here on mounting stamps. I've had a lot of people ask me about that and I thought this would be a good test run and my husband's here with me so he may ask a question from time to time and I'll try to make this as easy and as painless as possible. Um, first I'm going to start out with the scissors that you use to trim the rubber. This is just the rubber that, that you can buy. You can buy this from Stampscapes and a lot of stamp shows you go to, they sell the rubber like that. So um, this is just the unmounted rubber. This is how it comes. There is a mounting foam called Easy Mount and that is... Um, and I'll have to <laughs> learn to turn things around the right way for you because I'm used to shooting from the other direction. So this is a uh, static cling easy mount foam. It's really, really sticky on one side. And on the other side, it has a plastic coating. So when you peel that off, which it doesn't want to peel off right now, but when you peel that off, that mounts right on to your acrylic blocks when you're doing your stamping or on your stamping platforms, whatever um, whatever you like to do the best. I'm, I'm big using the acrylic mounts, but I know a lot of you are into the stamping platforms, so um, you can just get your stamps ready to go on that. I save all of my bits and pieces. I know that seems crazy. A lot of people just trim it up and throw it away. Um, I do, I have to mount a lot of small stamps uh, when I get stamps ready to do classes and shows and, and when I sell them. So I save all of my little bits and pieces so I can mount those small stamps whenever I need to onto that sticky backed product there and and I you save money that way these uh, easy mounts cost about five to six dollars a sheet I'll get it turned around the right way in a minute <laughs> um, they they're, they run about five to six dollars a sheet you can get a lot of stamps mounted out of this it's a little more economical to buy stamps unmounted um, I usually mount mine when I sell them so people can uh, you know use them right away a lot of times um, if you go out and buy a stamp, you sometimes bring it home and you think, oh, I have to mount that, and then you may never use it. But if it's if it's on the foam mount, ready to go, you can use it. But this is one way you can save money, or if you find a stamp that you really love that's unmounted and you want to know how is the right way to do this. Now, the first thing you have to do is trim up the stamp. Now, these are the scissors that I bought years ago. I think they're called Kai, K-A-I. They're a stainless steel scissor. They are extremely sharp. But I really love to use the Tim Holtz Tonic because they are non-stick. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to get sticky. The blades are going to get sticky because you're cutting through that really, really thick adhesive or really sticky adhesive. So I clean these with some Goo Gone or Undo or whatever you've got around that type of product. You can clean the blades with that. But I like the Tim Holtz. They're just as sharp as the Kai's. Um, they give you a little more control. This has more of a blunt end. This has more of a pointed end. So when you're trimming out, they give you a little more control. And when you're trimming, you want to trim as close to the image as possible. And you want to keep the blades straight up and down. You don't want them to be angled to one side or the other. So you want to keep them as straight up and down as you can. And the way these lights are in on in here they're going on my hands pretty good but they're causing a shadow so it's kind of hard for me to see so I'm going to try to trim it up as close as I possibly can you don't have to get right up to it and when you buy a stamp and it's mounted or unmounted you see that they haven't gone into every nook and cranny well oh, you got a question here can't you can't doing. see what I'm doing <laughs> no, that's my husband it's David <laughs> It's dark. It's too dark. Yeah, yeah. Can you all not see it good enough? Maybe we should you know, get the light in there a little better. How's that? You see that any better? 
spot here. It's not you still spot. can't see it? Well, I can see it. <laughs> Maybe it's I'm off. We'll see when we run this back if you were able to see it or not. Now, you could leave that area there, but I like to try to trim it up. It, like I said, it does not have to be precise or perfect. You just need to get it in there and, and keep your blades straight up and down so you get a good straight edge on there. You can do as little or, or you know, as much trimming as you want to do. Now, you could take that area out there because a lot of times when you're inking up a stamp, you get ink in those areas. Um, the Shamscape stamps are very well defined and etched um you very rarely get what i call shadows from the edges of a stamp of one of their stamps um, but you want to trim it up as best you can and uh, this happens to be a stamp i'm using hopefully using in some upcoming classes we'll see if they get accepted i'm hoping they do so you're going to trim away that excess rubber and dispose of it now i have a piece of uh, cling mount here that I have you know taken some out of already I'm just going to find a spot where I don't waste too much of my cling mount and then I'm going to trim that piece off I like watching paint dry I know <laughs> I'm going to trim a piece off and then we'll take the sticky side off. And I try to find an edge where I don't have to cut it all. If I can line it up to where there are places I do not have to trim. Now, I'm going to cut half of this with the scissors. And then I'm going to cut the other half with a hot knife. Hot knife is what I normally work with. If I'm doing some really tiny things like birds or little tiny stamps, a lot of times I will not use the hot knife. I will just use the scissors. Now, I'm going back with the Tim Holtz because I like this better. Uh, so you can see I'm going straight up and down. I'm going to try to get that where you can see it. Straight up and down with the blades. And you go as close in as you possibly can. Try to get that more out there in the light. I try to keep a piece of paper where I can stick those extra pieces down with because they're really, really sticky and they get everywhere. Okay. So you just make as straight a cuts as you possibly can around there. Now I'm going to show you the way I do it because I do... A lot of these can like I said I, I do sell stamps and uh, when I'm having to trim or mount a lot of stamps I use uh, a hickory hollow blade heated blade electric blade whatever you want to call it glass mat you need a glass mat you don't have to go out and buy an expensive glass mat just go to the hardware store and get a piece of it cut um, this I mean walnut hollow this is a walnut hollow a hot knife they call them um, it's the uh, it's the pointed blades I always keep some extra blades around but I can make one of these blades last a long time because I just use a file and file some of the uh, excess glue or adhesive off of the point while it's hot and that comes right off of there and you can resharpen your knife again get it cleaned up get it ready to go and make it last a lot longer but I always keep some of the extra blades on hand let me get some of that stuff out of the way now the beauty of the hot knife is you have so much more control you can go right into it and it makes a clean straight cut every time get it back out here under the camera kind of working it away from the camera like I said I, this is a new setup for me and I'm, I'm I'm learning so hopefully I'm not driving you all too crazy and one more little trim right there 
and there you go your whoops there you go it's all ready to put on an acrylic block or to use on your um on your uh, stamping platforms like the tim holtz or um any of the others that are out there there's a lot of different stamping platforms out there right now um but uh, this is this is how you mount a stamp it's easy to do it's fast you saw me do it real fast and if you want one of these hot blades I don't currently sell them but you can get them from Amazon it's made by uh, Walnut Hollow and you can get the extra blades through through Amazon too you may be able to find them in Hobby Lobby or maybe even Michaels too you might check there if you're not a big Amazon fan uh, for me I don't know what I do without Amazon sometimes <laughs> So I just hope this has been uh, some information for you on how to mount rubber stamps, give you a little more understanding on how it goes together. So um, I hope you'll look for my uh, videos in the future. And thank you for your time. This is Janet from A Stamp in Every Hand.